Let's begin by reading the text of Daniel chapter 2. Then we'll look at the outline in both the uh, preacher's outline and sermon Bible and uh, Dake's uh, Bible notes. And so the text reads, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time, because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. So the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made known the thing to uh, made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, 
O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will shew unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon the, thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut with cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the st stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thy hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these things, it shall break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes 
of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thy, thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, Sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Now let's look at the uh, outline. So in the beginning, we see Nebuchadnezzar, he's disturbed about his dreams. And then we see an example of the occult world's inability to help in a time of need. The king summons for his occult advisors, including the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he asks two things of them. He asks them to reveal the dream and to interpret the dream. Uh, they urge the king to share the dream. And then they assured him that once he shared it, they would interpret it. And so uh, the king said that the dream had departed from him. In other words, he couldn't recall it or remember it. And uh, he got upset and he threatened them that if they failed to meet his need, he would execute them, tear them limb from limb, and their property would be destroyed. On the other hand, if they were authentic and they were able to both reveal the dream and interpret it, he would reward them and give them great honor. They felt helpless and they begged the king, just share the dream and then we'll interpret it. He got even angrier and he reminded them of his threat of the penalty. He accused them of conspiring to trick him and mislead him and then stall him and delay the time until he could remember the dream. He warned them that their interpretation would only be accepted and proven by revealing that they also knew the dream. They made another plea. They said no person on earth can reveal another person's dream to them. And no king in history ever asked such a thing. Only the gods, they said, could reveal the dream to the king. And that made him furious. He ordered their execution, and not only theirs, but all of the wise men of Babylon. And so uh, Arioch, his captain of executioners, went to round them up. And uh, Daniel 
began to intervene. Daniel questioned the king's guard, and he spoke wisely and tactfully, calmly, and he asked why the king had issued such a harsh decree with such haste. And Daniel's humble request of the king uh, is that he requested time to seek the Lord for the dream and for its meaning. God gave him favor in this, and the king granted him his request. So Daniel returned home, and uh, he sought the Lord, but he first urged his friend, he explained the situation to them, and he urged them and led them to seek God's mercy. He stressed the importance of their prayer, that they were to pray fervently, because their lives were on the line. And David began to get visions from God in the night. God revealed what was in the king's head and gave him the interpretation. And because of this, Daniel began to praise the Lord. Dake in the Stake, uh, Dake Study Bible notes, notes 15 reasons uh, that Daniel praised the Lord in these three verses. Daniel said that wisdom belongs to the Lord. Power belongs to the Lord. That it is the Lord that changes the times and the Lord who changes the seasons. That he removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise. He gives knowledge to men who have understanding. He reveals deep things. He reveals secret things. He knows what is in the darkness. He dwells in light. He has given, Daniel said, he has given me wisdom. He has given me power. And then number 15 and verse 23, Daniel said, he has answered prayer by revealing to us the king's matter. And so, Daniel makes an immediate appeal to Arioch, and he asked him not to execute the wise men. He asked him uh, for an immediate escort and uh, consultation with the king. Daniel's consultation with the king was granted immediately. Arioch informed the king that uh, Daniel could reveal the dream and interpret it. So Nebuchadnezzar asked Daniel, can you reveal the dream and interpret it? And Daniel gave a strong witness. He said, the Lord alone has the knowledge to reveal the dream. The occult advisors do not have such knowledge. The God in heaven is the only one who can truly reveal mysteries. The Lord has shown the king what would happen in the latter days. The Lord had given the dream about coming events while the king was sleeping. So the credit for revealing this mystery of future events, Daniel gave God alone the credit. Daniel was not wiser than other people. God himself was the revealer of the dream in order to help the king understand. God's explanation of the dream. A picture of the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. And this is the third part of this chapter. And that includes verses 31 through 49. And in those verses, the dream is revealed. A huge statue was seen. Head of pure gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, feet of part iron, and part clay. A huge rock was seen. It was supernaturally cut out and started rolling. It struck the statue's feet and smashed them. It caused the statue to collapse with such force that its pieces were shattered into dust, was swept away by the wind, leaving no trace whatsoever of the statue. It became a great mountain, this stone, that filled the whole earth. 
the dream was explained that it represented five kingdoms, the head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And those years were 625 to 539 BC. His kingdom and life, his very power, strength, and honor were a gift from God. His rule was a responsibility placed into his hands by God. Number two, the breast and arms of silver, the Medo-Persia kingdom, 539 to 331 BC. Number three, the belly and thighs of bronze, the Grecian Empire, that's 331 to 146 BC. The legs of iron and the feet of iron and clay. That was the Roman Empire, 146 uh, to 476 BC. The Roman Empire with its crushing power to crush all opposing uh, kingdoms. It will be a divided empire, a federation of, king, of nations in the last days, represented by the feet and ten toes that were part of iron and clay. It will have parts or nations as strong as iron and parts or nations as weak as clay. It will be a mixed people who will no more remain united than iron mixed with clay. Five, the last kingdom, God's eternal kingdom, will be set up in the days of those kings represented by the feet and ten toes will be triumphant over all other kingdoms, will endure forever, will be the rock miraculously cut out of a mountain that crushes the nations, a picture of Christ, the cornerstone of God's work on earth, will certainly come and is guaranteed by God. The overwhelming response of uh, Nebuchadnezzar ends up this chapter. He fell prostrate, fell on the floor on his face and honored Daniel, treating Daniel like a god. He acknowledged Daniel's God to be above all gods, the God of gods, the Lord of kings, the revealer of mysteries. He promoted Daniel. He made him ruler over the province of Babylon made him the chief counsel over all the king's advisors. He promoted Daniel's three friends at Daniel's request. The three became administrators uh, of the province of Babylon, and Daniel remained in the royal palace. And so what are some of the things in this chapter that has really uh been a takeaway uh, for you as you read it. What are some of the questions that you have? What are some of the impressions that came to you as you uh, were able to dig deep? The introduction says, uh, nations rise and nations fall, and no nation lasts forever. Nations collapse because of changes in government rebellion, war, betrayal, weak leadership, and a lack of righteousness, a lack of justice, a lack of morality, and a lack of godliness. In the present scripture, Babylon is seen to be the first major worldwide empire. Thus, King Nebuchadnezzar, as well as all the world leaders who were to succeed him, needed to learn a much needed lesson. It was the Lord himself who had appointed them to be rulers. Therefore, they were held accountable for the way they treated and governed people. It was their wicked behavior and sinful lifestyles that caused nations to rise and fall upon earth. Wicked behavior and unbelief eats away at the heart of any nation and eventually causes a nation to collapse. But the day is coming 
when God will banish all the wicked and unbelieving nations from the face of the earth. He will establish his kingdom and rule the citizens of the earth in perfect righteousness and justice. In the days of Daniel, there was a great need for this wonderful promise given by God. Jerusalem and the nation of Judah have fallen to Babylon. The entire country with all its cities have been totally destroyed and the land have been stripped of all of its wealth. The survivors of the war had been deported to Babylon and a deep sense of despair and hopelessness had gripped their hearts. After all, their nation had been utterly destroyed, which meant they had lost their homes, property, wealth, and that many of their own family had been slaughtered in the war. Each exile was bound to be wondering what lay ahead in the future. Would Jerusalem and that nation ever be rebuilt? Would they and their family ever again have a home, property, jobs, and money enough to live a normal life? Was their fate and the fate of their nation finally sealed when Babylon burned the city to the ground? If the Jewish people ever needed some glimpse of hope, it was now. As this passage points out, God knew the people's need. He gave Nebuchadnezzar, the very king who had destroyed Jerusalem, a special dream. This dream is the subject of the present scripture that we read and are studying today. Within the dream, God pronounces a strong warning to the nations of the earth. and offers the greatest of hopes to all true believers, both Jews and Gentiles. And this is Nebuchadnezzar's dream of a huge statue, a picture of nations rising and falling and of God's coming triumphant kingdom. Three points. Number one, Nebuchadnezzar has a disturbance over the dreams and he consults his advisors, his occult advisors. And that's going to be verses 1 through 13. The second division of the chapter is Daniel's intervention and his seeking to understand the dream. And that is an example of God answering the prayers of his servant. And that's going to be found in verses 14 through 30. And the third division uh, is God's explanation of the dream, a picture of the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. And so that is the overview of chapter two for this week. What stood out to you? And I have a particular question. In chapter two, verse 11, what is the significance of this verse as it pertains to miracles. Could this be a definition of miracles? Let's talk about that. 